Welcome back to some more exciting SCA combat archery. This is from Golf Wars. This is the Ravine battle. This is an archery only battle and it was the first one of the war. Um, so there are only archers and people with shields on the field. There are no throwing weapons, no melee weapons, and we're in a ravine. So this is a pretty steep gully and because there are people camping on each of the sides, we kind of have to fight up and down in a certain direction. There's a pretty limited amount that we can walk up the side of the hill because we don't want to entice people to start mobbing shots that could potentially go into the tents. We repeated this battle three times, and uh, although I don't know the overall result, we will see at least until I die in each of the battles. You can see that brown wooden thing on my helmet. That is the mount to hold a first-person camera, and the observant among you might notice that it's a little bit different than what I was wearing at Penzik. That mount that I was using at Penzik was broken, and this year I put a lot of time into making a new, stronger one, buying a camera that was smaller, lower profile, so it could fit closer to my face and, and help me guard it better with my shield. Unfortunately, after working during all my initial tests, it just stopped working just before this battle. So it was electrically dead on arrival. There's no first person views for this Gulf Wars, but I think we still got a lot of great shots. Hope to bring that first person view back for the next set of battles. My first shot missed left and short. And my second shot, I decided to switch it up and try to add elevation and shoot diagonally towards somebody who might not see it coming, um, but shot a tree branch. This next shot misses again wide to the left. And I think, you know, part of it is just that I could have practiced more just before the event. I could be a better archer, but I'd also say on these really long range shots, when you add a lot of elevation and you're holding a bow, you end up kind of staring at your wrist or your forearm because that's just what's in front of your face. And I'm not so practiced in aiming well in that situation. Yeah, it's hard to shoot a bow as far as these crossbows. It's the maximum pounded bow. Let me say a little bit more about my bow. It's a modern recurve bow. It's a foam and fiberglass construction. It's 35 pound draw weight. That's the first time that's been allowed in this event. The old limit used to be 30 pounds. A bolt actually just came in and hit me in the quiver and knocked an arrow to the ground. At the moment, I wasn't quite sure how to handle it. When you're unsure, you generally take the hit. So I could have gone to one knee and said it hit me in the leg. But the thing that I was sure about in this situation, because I was at the edge of the world, was that the bolt that had come in had come in a direction where if it had not hit my quiver, it would have moved harmlessly past me. So I wasn't quite sure how to handle that. I asked the marshals after the event, and I got two answers. One of them said, ignore it. And the other one said, you could treat your quiver as being destroyed. Fire your last arrow, and that's it. Love to hear how you'd handle it in the comments. So far, I haven't hit anybody, and when I do try to do a long-range shot, I keep hitting the trees that are just above us. Uh, so I decided I really need to be standing somewhere else, and I think the best course of action is for me to rotate towards the edge of the field to my left and to use a tree as cover rather than the shield wall. If I don't say anything after a shot, you can assume it missed. I will mention if I ever hit anything. Unfortunately, this is a little bit too far over, and the marshal asked me to stand back on the other side of the tree, um, which would leave me exposed. So I decide to just change sides entirely, walk back in a way so I won't get sniped, and go to the far right side of the field. This tree? So spoiler alert, by the time that I reposition to the far side, basically all the enemy archers are dead and it takes us a few minutes to realize and, and call a hold and declare that one side has won. Um, so maybe I'll just take some time as the, the battle winds down to reflect on what I would do differently. My first thought is that as an archer, your advantage is your rate of fire and your disadvantage is the speed of the projectiles. So ideally, I would be a little bit closer and I would uh, be suppressing them with the amount that I was shooting. That would probably require me to go and, and buddy up with a shieldman before the scenario began and, and come up with a flanking maneuver. I'm not sure that they would have allowed us to do that because the geometry of this scenario, it would have caused the team to kind of shoot towards the tents where people were camping. 
And so it might even be that flanking wasn't an option, but maybe next time we can try that. At this point, we realize that it's just Shieldman on the Anstiora side, so Trimeris wins the first of the three rounds. So for the second match, we basically ran back exactly the same scenario. We did not switch sides, and I tried to do something a little different. I went towards the right initially, and as I'm walking here, I'm realizing there are no shields in front of me. There are very few trees, they're pretty narrow, and there's quite a substantial shield wall from the Anstiora side. Um, so I don't feel like I have a position of strength on the right. I start to move towards the left. I see on our left our shield walls actually moved a good, you know, 10-15 feet further than they did in the previous round. And I probably should have stuck with them. Unfortunately, I stopped by the same tree and shrub that I was near in the first round. And I didn't even really stand behind it properly. So I'm not actually in cover at all. For this first shot, there's just one moment where their shield wall separates and they reveal a crossbowman. I'm aiming well left to right, but it's short and it bounces between their legs. My next shot pitches down wildly and is basically flying through the air sideways and is therefore very inaccurate. That one must have hit something. That's not a good shot. My suspicion is that my very large plate on my demi gauntlet actually caught the arrow on its way out. Later in this war, I start wearing my full gauntlet on my bow hand. Let's see if that fixes it. Another very low shot would have been below the knees had it not hit a shield. I was just barely too slow to get out of the way of the bolt. It just hit me in the back of the hand. In hindsight, that's not a valid uh, target area, so maybe I could have ignored it, but I think I had more fun going to the side of the field and figuring out what I could do with a single hand. I run, I get a shield, I realize I should wear a full gauntlet on my hand that has nothing in it, I go back and get that, and then I uh, make my bold move to the uh, front line. This is me running at a pretty good pace, but on camera it just looks so slow. I think it has something to do with the way things get stabilized, um, but I also need to fix my armor. My leg armor will start to rattle loose if I am in a dead sprint. I get shot in the chest here and that's the end of the battle for me. Maybe I could have done something more effective, but I'd like to laugh some more. For this third battle, I'm a little bit late. As a theme this war, it takes me a little bit longer than most people to get my gear together when I have cameras as well. When I get up to the line, I notice a crossbowman who's standing way out, away from their shield wall. And I take a very well-aimed shot, but unfortunately, <laughs> They notice it and they just step aside. They're still, they're still, they're still, and that little step was enough to make it miss. The shot gets caught under my demi gauntlet again and it hits a shield. Keeping track, we're in the third battle, it's been about 10 minutes, and I have yet to hit anyone. This is my first shot that hits, it legs the crossbowman. You guys have to do with the marshal! Get down here! 
As you can hear from the conversation with the marshal, having the position higher and more to the outside is really advantageous because it's hard to shoot at those people in order to protect bystanders. Right at that moment, I see the shield wall starting to charge to take that advantageous position. I meet their charge, I shoot at the crossbowman in red, hit him, he shoots at me, misses slightly to the left, a second crossbowman pops out from behind the shield wall, misses slightly to my right, a third one pops out, which hits me directly in the gorget in the throat. Let's watch that again in slow motion. Unfortunately, with that death, I don't know how the final round ended, but thank you for your time and attention, and remember to like and subscribe to see more combat archery and heavy combat melee footage from Golf Wars. If you're interested in trying SCA combat or really any part of pre-17th century life, you can learn more at welcome.sca.org. There you'll find information about all things SCA, including which kingdom operates in your local area. If you're specifically interested to do what you saw in this video, you can check out some unofficial Facebook groups for melee combat or combat archery. I hope to see you at an event someday, and thank you for watching.